Tonight our guest is one of the most gifted and honored writers and producers in television today. The originator of that wonderful world of fantasy, The Twilight Zone. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rod Serling. Thank you, Harry. It's nice to be here. Mr. Serling, I'm sure that you've been asked this question many times before, so therefore I'm sure that you'll have an answer for us. Just where do you get the ideas for the far-out things that happen in the Twilight Zone? Well, Hans, the usual way of writing something for the Twilight Zone is to take some ordinary, average situation that occurs in the world every day and then tone it down a little. <laughs> You mean that you think that the things that happen in real life are as fantastic as the things that happen in the Twilight Zone? Well, look at it this way. Fractured Flickers is on the air, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> pretty fantastic. Oh, it's not very funny, but it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. You mean to tell me that the Fractured Flickers, Hans, isn't right out of the Twilight Zone? Well, we were hoping to keep it a general secret until renewal time. <laughs> Mr. Serling, with your professional interest in the strange and the unknown, you must... Uh, follow our outer space program with a great deal of interest. Well, not really, Hans. You see, for us fantasy and science fiction buffs, reading about today's space exploration is rather like looking at last year's newspaper. After all, Jules Verne had us on the moon 75 years ago. And writers like Henlein and Clark and Bradbury have made space travel sort of a, a normal means of locomotion. I had no idea they were so backward at Cape Canaveral. Well, look at the way they count. <laughs> but I, I do think that traveling over interstellar distances is a fascinating way to live. I, I often do it myself. You do? <laughs> oh, indeed I do. The things you see, Hans, the alien creatures you meet, the weird situations you get into. You are speaking of outer space. No, Hans, inner space. Because no matter how far mankind travels out toward the stars, he'll find greater distances, more beautiful sights, and more frightening creatures inside his own mind. Oh, I wish I'd said that. Uh, uh, some I minds wish I'd written it. I mean, <laughs> some minds, you know, that I know would be a mere sleeper jump in any direction. <laughs> Mr. Serling, we on Fractured Flickers are very much aware of your continuing fight for recognition and stature for writers on television. And other media as well. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, now, as you know, uh, we are obliged to employ several uh, uh, <laughs> writers on Fractured Flickers. I wonder if you'd care to comment on their work, hmm? I'm not a professional critic. Oh, know. my dear fellow, we're all professional critics these days. Well, I, I did look at some of the fractured flickers, and I talked to your writers. Well, that was nice of you. I don't, you know. <laughs> well, I told them the first thing they should do is join a union. That's a nasty word. The writers' union? No, Hans, the butchers' union. This is only fitting, but then, of course, we'd have to buy them some of those little white jackets. <laughs> well, Mr. Serling, it's been a pleasure having you in our little soiree, uh, for more than one reason. What do you mean? Well, it was comforting for me to discover that you are really a, a very normal flesh-and-blood creature, just as is everyone else, and that the Twilight Zone and the things that happen in it are purely fictional. Of course they are, Hans. Well, I see it's time for me to be going, so I'll say goodnight to you and your listeners till next time. Thank you, and good night, Rod Serling, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>